because we have immeasurables in architecture, it's very hard not to have a star system. If you've ever seen an old-fashioned design crit, whether whether critics take down the architect, the student who weak and vulnerable, and they say things like, um, "You haven't understood the mandates of the industrial system." Uh, architecture historian woman Norma Evanson said, "Why don't they just say you haven't designed the Harvard box? That's what you meant." Well, when you face things like that, where you say. I don't know what the hell architecture is because look at the stuff people tell me. And there's no measurables. You can't measure beauty. I can give you the same six words and with those words you can produce something that is beautiful and something that is ugly. And then the thing that is ugly we may, may find beautiful next year. So it's so much treading on air that people look for gurus for that reason. You can hope that the jury system and the, the kind of overall medium, media system becomes gentler, which makes it less frantic, the star system and the need for it. You can hope that other aspects of architecture become valued as well as design, but you know, designing is also my best thing. My second best thing is writing, uh, looking and learning, I, all of that, but um, and for that you do need some strength of ego and you need to find it somehow. So I don't think we'll ever get rid of stars. I think stars should be slightly different characters. They should be less, less need to wear er ermine and <laughs> wear a crown, um, and more able to show that they are um, involved in the same things of love life as everyone else and still face the same problems and then have found a way to do it that is wonderful and that you have the chance to do that too. But there should be other stars as well, and I've suggested that um, architecture is by far not all design, but the act of, of designing itself is not all design. Half of it is analysis, and there's room for creativity and analysis. And if you haven't been creative about analyzing your problem, you probably won't be very creative about designing it either. So now we say there's a room for creativity in, in analysis. And then the one that I can't get the AIA to understand here, and I can't get the RIBA to understand much, I must say, is that there's room for joint creativity. Two minds can be very creative together. They insist that only one mind can be a genius and then the others are all helpers. The, the Pritzker Prize is a very sad situation because J. Pritzker um, decided to give a prize of this sort because he had a lecture course with Lewis Mumford. Now I knew Lewis Mumford and he was a great human being, a great everything. And what he wouldn't have gone for is the value system that Philip Johnston instigated for the Pritzker Prize. So he, in a way he led the Pritzkers by the nose toward this notion it must be a finished building, it must be one genius architect, and it must be in our mold, which is the old white male mold of giving prizes. And um, so all these things I've said to leaven it up, they have tried to do now, but they still, their criteria come from that time. And so do all architects' criteria. And the things that I've tried to do to help architects open a window onto a wider world which is a world of words and images, and not saying one is more than the other. The words of functionalism as helping to change aesthetic um, grooves and ruts. That, that world which Bob and I share was the reason Bob didn't get the Pritzker Prize for 13 years. He should have got it very early on because he was the leading person with, you know, in ideas and architecture with complexity and contradiction. It turned the whole architecture culture around but they still denied it to him because he didn't meet the standard. He had a wife who was an architect, and, but that wasn't the reason he liked Las Vegas, etc., etc. So um, I, the Pritzker people have a long way to go and they're trying and then they make mistakes still, but it's now with better will. And um, people have suggested, why don't you submit now without Bob? Because he submitted. And I've said, 
the idea was a joint creativity. It doesn't mean I'm not very creative and I'm loving the work I'm doing now as when Bob is not doing work. I miss him, but I've also got opportunities as a result of that. But in the end, I feel that they owe me not a Pritzker Prize, but a Pritzker Inclusion Ceremony. And that would be not somewhere where it's very expensive to go and must be planned years ahead and not with all the hoo-ha of that, but something very nice and modest. I'm too old to travel. It would have to be where I am or near where I am and a bit more um, off the cuff because who knows if I could make it that day. You see what I mean? But the idea would be to say there are other ways of being an architect that are very, very creative and let's salute some of those and let's salute the notion of joint creativity as well.